the age of 40, Alexander Dembitz turned down an offer to join the Executive Committee of the Midland Bank in favour of founding his own consulting firm. The firm became the largest consulting practice in Central Europe and was eventually bought by Deloitte. So when this job came up, you were living in Switzerland and the new job was in the UK, uh, which would have been a big move, but it must have been a big decision not to take it. Look, necessity is the mother of invention. And it was for me, and I think it is for many others, perhaps. Um, I'm, I was well paid at Midland Bank for my age and also in an absolute sense. I was very well paid. But with two children, you tend to eat what you earn. And since I never thought of ever leaving the Midland Bank, I wasn't saving. So we didn't have a lot of savings. And we don't, we don't come from money. We have what we earned. But we had a little bit stashed away. And the conversation with my wife was that if we don't go on holidays and don't buy the third sneaker, pair of sneakers, and if we don't buy whatever, and the children should never discover, the children should know that we're scaling down. Don't go out to dinner, no big holidays. How long will we survive? And we looked at our numbers, we looked at our spending pattern, and I still have the uh, SWOT thing that we did with my wife at home, you know, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And we still have that. We did that in September 1987. And we did it in the evening, after dinner, the, the kids were down. And we came to the conclusion that we could survive. No cleaners. I would have to clean the windows, and I would have to push the lawnmower around. That we could survive two years and no more. And what was, the, what was the alternative? What were you going to use those two years for? The alternative was to set up your business. Now, I don't know one end of a screwdriver from the other, but I do understand the disciplines of banking, and I did understand IT from the predecessor experience. And so together with a guy, I set up a business in 1988, in February 1988, which was in banking IT, a small consulting business of three individuals delivering services to banks, facilitating the efficiency of the way they use their IT infrastructure, which is not mean boxes and hardware, but how they use this, the programs that, are, that run on these computers. You didn't stay as a three-man firm for very long. How, how did you grow the business? I had met in London, when working for the bank in London, a senior Hungarian banker. We did any number of transactions. Midland Bank had a deep pocket. He had great ideas. He returned to Hungary, became the chairman and chief executive of one of the larger Hungarian banks. I was in Budapest and called on him. By that time, my little firm in 1988 had been established. We had moved from three in Geneva to five in Geneva, but it was a five-man firm. And he told me that um, it's possible that his bank could use my services. Well, of course, I fell over. There's nothing, nothing greater. What could happen to me? How lucky can you get? And he says, well, we're thinking of replacing the trade finance subsystem in the bank. Come do a, a little analysis and sit in front of my board of directors and tell us what you think. I was a third person to go in because it's tendered. Uh, there were two of the world's leading international professional services firms that, had, that were ahead of me. I was the third person. They had done some of their homework. They brought in their people from London and elsewhere. They made their presentation, and I was a third on. Now, I left Hungary when I was 10. You can imagine how good my Hungarian was 20 years later or 25 years later for 35 years later. It was appalling. You know, I could order food in a restaurant, but I couldn't read nor write. Um, but there I was. I could speak more Hungarian than you can speak to Hungarian today. And that was the case in comparison to the other people that came before me. I was a banker. I had great references from the Midland Bank. I understood what they wanted. And I knew that what they wanted is based on ignorance. So I had the courage of my conviction to tell them in pathetic Hungarian, that what they wanted was madness. What they needed is a, not a subsystem, but a completely new core banking system. 
And that's what I would do. And I walked away with a mandate. And so once I've got three banks in Hungary, where the, my little firm already had a sense of gravitas because we were selected, because nobody else in that space. And I didn't choose to compete with the likes of the big international consulting firms in areas where I had no competence. So I stuck to, I stuck to the knitting, core banking systems. And nobody wanted that. So one thing led to another, and after one country, I moved to another country now. And then, over the next eight years, my little business became the single largest consulting practice in the whole of Central Europe. All the big accounting firms moved into Central Europe in 1989 after the Berlin Wall came down. How did you come to be in a joint venture with Deloitte? Initially, they had no real commitment. None of them had, not Deloitte, but none of them had real commitment to the, to the proposition of this new open geography called Eastern Central Europe. And what we had done, you see, is we had set up with Deloitte then a joint venture because the rule of the law at the time in Hungary but elsewhere as well was that these large professional firms could not set up wholly owned subsidiaries. It was against the law. You could only do that in partnership with a local firm. So by then, by 1991, my biggest client in Hungary was Hungary's single largest commercial bank, where we had, we had been retained to implement a, bank, a brand new core banking system. The chief executive of that bank is a great personal friend of mine, so I took to him the proposition of, why do we set up jointly Deloitte Hungary with a 10% participation by the, the country's largest bank? I had 40%. They had 50%, and there was a shareholders' agreement in place to give them control of their audit, tax, and traditional business leads, business lines. And that's how I got to it. And it worked for them, and it worked for me. What's the secret to growing a consulting firm, as you did? You have to have a niche. You have to have a niche. I know of so many who didn't have a special niche, but who had a special friend. And when that special friend faded, the business faded. This is not Bakshish at all. No, this is somebody who believes in you. I said, well, help me do it. But you have to have a niche. You have to, there has to be something where you excel and where the market recognizes that you can bring value that perhaps the rest of the market doesn't have. And you have to be there. You have consistently to show that you deliver. You deliver to time, to budget, you deliver.